All right, ooh, Roscales, welcome back to the channel, man. I'm talking about Leipzig. After that Atletico win, I feel like a lot of you deserve to be hearing about Leipzig and why I actually don't hate them, despite the fact that I'm a Bayern fan, Bundesliga fan. This is my favorite league in the world. The pressing, the way it's played, is it's my favorite. Jurgen Klopp is one of my favorite managers in the world. Maybe it's just a German thing. It is obviously the pressing and everything. It's a German philosophy on football. But I just like it. The directness, everything about the Bundesliga is amazing. So I'm obviously always going to have to have an opinion on things like this. Leipzig. Do I hate and despise RB Leipzig for ruining the game? Nope, I don't. I actually don't. In fact, I appreciate and actually respect what they've done. How many teams can make rules as easily bent as Leipzig did. First of all, we know their whole story with Salzburg and how they changed that team to Red Bull Salzburg and just pretty much saying, you know what, you've been to a European Cup Winners' Cup final, you know, nah, you don't have any history, just scrap that. That's disgusting, that's something I don't wanna see. They took Red Bull New York, gave the MLS a name, right, Red Bull, gave the MLS a path to success for clubs. And now that influenced the MLS because teams now have sponsorships. In the US, sponsorships aren't really that huge of an idea on team shirts. Nah. It might seem like a weird idea to the Germans or anyone or the Europeans, but US teams don't really do sponsors. So for the MLS, that was huge because the MLS was a new thing. People didn't know that much about it. And sponsors coming into it was huge. So Red Bull takes a W. The Golden State Warriors, one of the biggest basketball teams, doesn't actually even have a sponsor. So, you know, in a way, <laughs> Red Bull created a path for other US teams to take suit. Nah, but seriously, let's get on the more important things. The rules they broke, 50 plus 1, that's the biggest one. Actually, they didn't break 50 plus 1, they just went around it in a very unique way. So the whole idea of 50 plus 1, for anyone that doesn't understand, is that fans have to own 50% plus 1% of the club. You can join Bayern's memberships and you pay between 20 to 60 million, 60, no, not million, just 60 euros flat out annually to have a decision and to have a say in what happens with Bayern Munich. That's crazy, astronomically crazy. Dortmund, the same. You can pretty much become a member, in a way, a part sharer of Bayern Munich and Dortmund. But what Leipzig did was they pretty much said, Oh, I didn't explain. Okay, so the reason why that's important, the 50 plus one rule, it isn't just so the fans own, I mean, no, it's to own the voting right. So the fans can vote and have a say on everything. Because that's what German football is about. That's why I love it so much. It's about the fans, the ultra sha la 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 Bayern Munchen. That's the suit curve. But that's it. That's what German football is about. It's about the fans. So the 50 plus one rule reflects that. So if your new owners just want to change your club shirts and colors, you can just vote no and it won't happen. Like no one's going to come in and just put a gun in your face like nah. You know, it's democracy. Voting. That's it. Love it. Everyone loves it in Germany. It's what makes the game so beautiful for Germans and also people outside the world. But how Leipzig did was they basically said, okay, we'll own 99% of our company, but we'll give the voting rights to the 1% of our members. They have about 17 members who are all, I think most of them, pretty much all of them, are all Red Bull employees. So <laughs> Red Bull pretty much have a voting right in their say. But people can join Leipzig's membership, except you're paying, instead of joining Bayern and paying 60 euros, you're paying 800 euros to be a Leipzig member. So it makes it very hard for a normal fan to become a member of their club because of that little restriction of monetary things alone. And that, that ladies and gentlemen, is how they got through that rule. So they didn't break it, they just went around it. The 1% of members who own the club still get their say in everything. They can still join and be a member. They still get a say in 100% of the decisions. They have 100% of the voting rights. So what they say, goes but what they say slash red bull employees goes but we all know the 17 members ain't the ones behind the club right they also tried to have red bull in their name but guess what the bundesliga was like nah nah sponsors can't have their name and the team thing and they just changed it to rosin ball sport leipzig which means lowing ball or something crazy like that I, it doesn't matter because it just spells rb leipzig that's all we remember as we don't go 
Actually, I do say Red Bull Leipzig because that's what we know them as. So, the final verdict here, do I hate them? No. But why do people hate Leipzig? Well, you can point out the few inhumane things they have done over their whole you know, lives and their lifespans. No club is perfect. Not even Bayern Munich, our, lovely, our, our loving club. Not even them. Dortmund isn't perfect. They take players and sell them off like they don't mean anything to them. They're not perfect. Leverkusen's not perfect. Hoffenheim, obviously, they're not perfect. No one's perfect. No club in the Bundesliga has a clean history. Nope, not a single club. Maybe St. Pauli, but not a single club, in my opinion, has a clean history. Leipzig aren't particularly known for taking players from the Leipzig area in Germany and raising them up in their academy. They're slowly getting better with that, but what they'd rather do is they find players through their unique scouting network around the world who fit Red Bull's philosophy, pretty much blueprinted by Ralph Ragnick, and they just recruit those players for 500k and then they become the next thing. Timo Werner was like 2 million. Was it from Stuttgart? I think so. 2 million. I remember watching a video of little Werner. Leipzig knew about him. Kimmich. They also had Kimmich. From the third division to the second division. That's the type of recruitment and just smart brains that Leipzig have, man. And they've had that for so long. Their recruitment is second to none. So you can say, of course, they don't really build their players. So you can't say they give young players that much of a chance. Yeah, yeah, you can say that. But you can't deny the fact that they take players from out of nowhere and make them to somebodies. They take no ones and make them into someone. I mean, just look at Upamecano. Just one of the best center back performances I've ever seen in my life. Watching right here today. Hey, who was he three years ago? Who was he, you know, coming out from... Red Bull Salzburg. I mean, that is a weird part, isn't it? That's another weird thing. But that's normal, right? Clubs like Man City have a billion clubs that are associated with them. Bayern Munich are connected with Dallas. That's how we got Chris Richards. So if Richards did well, technically we did the exact same thing Leipzig do with Salzburg. And it's not like every single Salzburg player, you know, Haaland should have gone to Leipzig then because he's a better player than Timo Werner. Would have cost less money, but that's not how it works. People think Leipzig just go to negotiate with Salzburg and be like, yes? They say yes. No, Leipzig actually pay money for to, to Salzburg because they're a completely different club, just owned by the same people. Now I see why that's weird. <laughs> but on the money spending side, yes, Leipzig did get a lot of money to spend. Actually, no, not that type of money. Not Man City shike money. Not that type of money. Not PSG money. Mm -mm. They get strategic money to spend at a certain time and they make their money too i mean selling Werner, selling nabi keita for 70 million leipzig might not make as much money their net spend is still in the positive which means they have spent more money than they brought in so you can look at that and say well they injected money into their club oh no crap <laughs> no crap <laughs> No, not every team's not going to inject money into their club. Yeah, owners give money to their clubs all the time. German football isn't really about teams not spending money at all. It's just very restricting for teams. So Leipzig spending money looks like they don't have... Well, they do have restrictions because their highest signing is Dani Omo for $25 million. That's it. They're not buying players for $80 million like Man City are or $222 million like Neymar to PSG, or $150 million for Kylian Mbappe. They're not doing that necessarily, but what they are doing is they're recruiting players, they're giving themselves a very low budget, and they're saying, okay, let's spend $10 million here, $5 million, $2.3 million, let's spend it. And eventually they build a squad, and over the years, with great managers too, that take them to different steps. Julian Nagelsmann will win a trophy in the next two years. That will happen. I think so. Maybe the Champions League this season. Hell no. Bayern Munich need to win that trophy more than they do. But getting to a Champions League semi-final will be a big boost to their players. Because Upamecano might start feeling like, I know what this project is needing. What they need now is a trophy. When they win like a Pokal or even the Bundesliga, that's where people will really start elevating their hate to this new level. Because they're going to get to a new level. Now Guzman is there to win something, build beautiful brand, develop a lot of players, but win something. And then players could start being like, hey, I want to stay here. They're going to start getting more fans too, because people are naturally just going to start following a winning team like Leipzig. Unfortunately, a lot of people happen to be plastic. 
And you can't blame them because you're from Leipzig. There's no big club around you. You're just going to go to the one that looks like it's going to succeed and give you the least stress. And I always say this and I always think this to myself. Football is a very capitalism game. Whether you like it or not, if someone has the best product, in this case, if someone plays the best football, has the best players, they're going to make the most money. That's just how it works. People always complain about Bayern ruining the Bundesliga. That's only down to us. We're the reason we're this successful, not because other teams are just crap. No, because we have been at this level where we've decided to produce the best football, the best players, and that makes us a better product for people. Saying Leipzig is weird and people shouldn't be supporting Leipzig, yeah, blah, 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 is basically like going to the movies and saying, everyone, go watch this Bollywood movie over there and not this nice Avengers 200 million pound budget euros for the Germans and the, yeah, and the dollars for my Americans out there. My lovely Americans, USA, love this country, best country in the world. So, <laughs> would you rather go watch that nice movie that has a 200 million budget or a Bollywood movie? Or some, what's it called when a movie is off like the mainstream, you know, like one of those movies, like an off movie, like, like no, not many people know about it, you know, those types of films. Would you rather do that? You know what? Most people would rather watch good football. And people look at Bayern Munich and like, why do they have so many fans? It can't just be because of their success. A lot of it is. You know, I wouldn't have become a Bayern Munich fan. I'm going to admit this now. If Bayern were getting relegated to the third Bundesliga and Ian Robin was playing for Bayern, I, I, no, no. I'm not saying if Bayern got relegated, I'd stop supporting Bayern. That's not what I'm saying. But I wouldn't have become a Bayern fan if we weren't a good team. That's that's me saying what, what's factual. That's a lot of you, too. Would your parents have been watching or supporting Bayern if we weren't doing good? You know, and a lot of people are like, oh, I'm from Munich. You know, my parents grew up with Bayern. And I'm like, well, your parents grew up to Franz Beckenbauer. They had a hell of a team supporting. They had three Champions Leagues in a row. That's an amazing freaking thing, right? So your parents were plastics too. And I think people get lost in this thing where they're like, either you're a real thing or you're not. And Leipzig for me, even though they have a, they have their faults, no, no club is perfect. Not even my beloved Bayern Munich. We're not perfect. I bet you we do some immoral things too. Apparently, clubs come out and say we speak to parents of players. And I don't know. I don't think that happens, but that's just them being salty. But we're not perfect. That should prove that. But thank you, everyone, so much for watching. Mia San Mia. Ah, shoot. This is the wrong channel. I'm out. Raw skills. Bye. <laughs>